Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network, SoCal Sweat. My name is Anne McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Yow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals, and let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. Happy New Year, everyone. This is your host, Anne McDaniels of SoCal Sweat, and thank you so much for joining me for another episode. And as they say in the GoDaddy commercials, 2020 is gone and 2021 is on. Well, don't we know that? And since I love cars, I'm going to use a car reference. As the Porsche 911 Turbo S travels from 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds, this may feel about the same speed at which the holidays just all of a sudden stopped, and it's now January 2021. The obvious COVID truly put a wet blanket on the holiday season, but we were able to, to distract ourselves with the festivities of the meals, songs, shopping, and this provided for great solace and a little, you know, break from the stress. But now we're back with a forced positivity, and I want to be positive, and everyone's being positive, but it's just... Somehow it's very forced because you just to go from 2020 to 2021 with all the problems that we have facing us, it can get to be a little daunting. And then on top of that, we are facing our New Year's resolutions, returning to work, and also facing a very long season of winter months ahead. So it's like it's the post-holiday blues because we had all of that fun and festivities if, if we were able to do so with social distancing. And then you get the long winter months, which it really is, you know, seasonality disorder is a big, big thing. We get less than 12 hours of sunlight per day, and that can cause a lot of stress in people. So back to those holidays, uh, just a personal share. I definitely was throwing a pity party for myself. I canceled all my flights just because I wanted to be responsible. And I saw, you know, and also it's a little bit harder for me to travel just because I would have to bring the crutches home to the Midwest and it would be a whole lot of distraction for people. And I just thought I'd already been home in October and um, I just decided against it. But and my whole family did really, but it just was, wasn't the same. It truly wasn't the same. And I also was dealing with, you know, my, my grandmother's death by myself. And I just allowed myself to be sad. And then I felt really guilty being sad because it's like, well, here I am in a beautiful home with and it's warm and I am financially I, I you know I, I'm I have financial freedom right now and I I felt guilty for even being alive and being healthy when so many people aren't but I allowed myself to feel sad anyway and you know usually I volunteer all over the holiday season but I couldn't do that this year because of my injuries and also just being on the front lines to serve a lot of us weren't able to do that because of COVID of course so I just let myself feel guilty a little bit and then I made up for it by doing a lot of donations and um, sending some, you know, monetary funds and sponsoring a family and then promised myself in the future, I will go back to volunteering again for sure and I, will, I intend to fly home again very soon to make up for that lost Christmas season. But it just, it was, it was a lot and, you know, it, we have to just allow ourselves, if we're sad, just let yourself be sad. If you feel some guilt, don't, you know, try not to feel that. I was really struggling with that myself. So I hope everybody had some kind of a wonderful season and just being with some family and friends. And I know a lot of people have lost people and it's just terrible. And also, you know, some businesses have thrived and it's been a wonderful year while others have suffered. So we want to attack 2021 with a great vigor and attitude of positivity. And we are. It's just there's little things that still linger and we want to look at this next year as the roaring 20s the true roaring 20s and I think it can come back from all the you know a lot of things are being done so we will keep staying positive so again all of these things are over and we're facing the seasonality disorder on top of that with a with a long winter days there are many things that we can do to really work on not being depressed during this time and I'm going to talk about that and then I'm just going to 
gloss on a few ways to sort of restructure your day for these New Year's resolutions if we're putting pressure on ourselves. And for those of you that are working from home with families, just things that we can do that some extensive research and I've met with some experts as to what could be suggested. So for, for just the blues and seasonality disorder, many things that we can do, sleep, exercise, create a community, sunlight or light therapy, vitamin D, nutrition, drink more water, proper meal prep, sit down to eat, eliminate stress, I mean, eliminate screen time, excuse me, take, te- take technology breaks, and then possibly seek a therapist. So first and foremost is the sleep. And people, you know, I am by choice not married and I do not have kids. And someone could look at me and say, oh yeah, right, look at, you know, you, tr- you, tr- you tell me to get 79 hours of sleep. And that is what's recommended. And I used to sleep even before the pandemic, like maybe three to four hours a night. I was going at top speed. And I think the pandemic has changed a lot of our our patterns. In fact, two-thirds of adults in America have said that their morning rituals have been completely disrupted because of a complete change in schedule. So it's really suggested to get seven to nine hours of sleep per night. This just really helps the psyche. And try to avoid when you wake up in the morning try to avoid hitting the snooze button or there are also alarm clocks that are is that are sunrise sun some sun, sunrise and sunset alarm clocks that will sort of mimic the sun and circadian rhythms to get you back in a groove to help you but again i've never been one to hit the snooze button and i do that a lot during the pandemic and i'm trying to restructure that for 2021 but it's just so comfortable and it's just so warm and cozy. It's just hard to do, but we have to do it. Um, if it's hard to go to sleep at night, and I know myself, I'm like a vampire. I have to have total darkness and total silence. I have to have blackout curtains and I have to have absolutely zero noise. Some people need to have a fan on or need to have some kind of noise. And there are noise machines, whether it be brown noise or pink noise or white noise and I will put those in the, in the links below that would drive me crazy but studies have shown that that really helps a lot of people whether it be a noise maker or a noise blocking machine so and we need to practice proper sleep hygiene which really means just eliminating devices shutting off your cell phone shutting off your tv just for a while before you wind down turning down the lights and possibly if you need to be working on the computer wearing blue light blocking glasses. I have not I have not purchased those yet, but definitely intend to because I work on my computer late at night. And that'll just block the rays and not give you stress in the head and give you a headache and will allow you yourself to turn off. And also, this appeals to me in particular, which I definitely do wrong. I, I consume caffeine all day because I'm sort of ADHD and it actually keeps me sane. And it does not, it doesn't, rile me up it actually calms me down so but for those of you that can't take caffeine at a certain time after a certain time you know don't have if you have if you need coffee at night maybe just do a decaf or a cup of tea just to have that warmth and yeah because that will really get your brain waves going and then also just shut off that cell phone sometimes it's hard to sleep and then you want to be on social media but that's only just very distracting so those are some things that you can really do to get the seven to nine hours of sleep possible. You know, this is just what's recommended. And I will put all the links below with some of those noise machines and the certain alarm clocks that can really help, including some of the blue light blocking glasses. Number two, exercise. Okay, so when you're depressed and then you're coming off the holiday season with all the treats, this is about the last thing you want to hear. And then you're dealing with New Year's resolutions that may be Maybe some of you may be facing uh, the goal of the weight loss is 100 pounds. And when someone tells you to exercise, you want to deck them. I understand. Um, with With these exercise goals, it's recommended to only get 30 minutes of physical activity a day. That's really not a lot. And hopefully you can build up to more because the more the better, obviously. But just think, if it's only three minutes of 10 rounds, that would be 30 minutes right there. That could very easily mean taking a walk in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. And then all the other stuff that you do during the day. So you're already there 
And you can even, if it's too much, just walk to the mailbox and back every day or walk to the end of the driveway, whatever you can do, or just walk around your apartment or house. Get yourself moving and motivated and get the blood flowing because not only is this just good for obvious or obvious physical health, but this is good for immunity. We need to stay at proper, you know, height, weight levels and things like that. And this just keeps us going. That adds to our immunity. It really does. So just add small steps if you're feeling unmotivated. Keep it simple. Like I said, walking out to the mailbox, the driveway, doing the three times 10 minute segments, very easy. Um, bite size, you know, bite sized pieces. And I, a lot of people on here are, are exercise addicts. I have been, I have had to slow down just because of my injuries, which drives me crazy, but I have found other ways, a lot of resistance training, um, just walking as much as I can on my own. And then also a lot of uh, just a stationary bike and just things. And, and if you have an injury or you're not able to use your legs or something like that, studies have shown that even if you work your upper body, you're still working your whole body because you can even get more toned. Studies have, have shown that. So don't get discouraged. But with that resistance training, it really is important to possibly, if you can, you know, there's a little bit of, there's cardio, but then there's body weight or using weights because this just does wonders for the body. And the more muscle tissue you have, that signals that the body is healthy and it's going to just, it's going to react to that. And you also, you burn more calories with muscle than you do, you know, with, with everything else. So, cause it takes more for that, there takes more calories for your muscles to maintain themselves. So just think it's an extra calorie burner. Now, the third one is just to create a community. Some people love to be alone all the time. I myself am an extroverted introvert. I am extremely outgoing, but when I'm done, I'm done. And I'm definitely an introvert because I'm kind of cerebral and nerdy on the side, even though I'm very outgoing, of course, and I work in film and television and, and you, you put up a front and that's, that is me also, but I definitely need to be introverted sometimes. But for some people, they need to be around a community. So create that community. Uh, there's a lot of solace done during the, you know, during the pandemic, during the shutdowns. And for those of us in LA, we are still very much shut down with so many things. But just try to create a community uh, and, and try to get face-to-face time, even if it's just, you know, there's, there's Zoom and you can do that on the screens. But even if you want to just get together outside and socially distance and wear the mask and, and walk with somebody and talk to somebody that really does help and lift spirits. And even if you want to get together and bitch and complain, it feels good to have a friend to talk to. And, but otherwise, if you'd like to be by yourself, that's completely understood. I'm a little bit of both. But even with that, if you're needing an exercise buddy that adds another dimension of creating that community, getting outside and exercising. And so you're exercising and getting outside and meeting with a friend. So it kind of kills a lot of birds with one stone. And also with that would be sunlight or light therapy. Again, these shorter, these shorter days of, of, of the winter can really wreak havoc on the body and it's, it makes you depressed. You feel like you're almost not as motivated as you usually are because it just seems to, the day just seems to stop all of a sudden and you feel like you need to go to bed or, or start to wind down or watch TV. And that's always an excuse that most people want to do, including myself, which is not good. But sunlight or light therapy, the more you can be exposed to the sun, obviously with in wearing sunblock and being careful, the better because Most of us are deficient on vitamin D, especially those of us in California, Southern California, which is very surprising, but I think it's due to the smog. But the Vitamin D Council recommends 2,000 IU at vitamin D for a normal healthy adult and more if if someone's not exposed to the sun as much or if someone's overweight. You can always take vitamin D supplements and if you don't want to take those, You can also do delicious cod liver oil, which I am very strange. I actually do like the taste of, and you can drink that or just simply take the pills. But, you know, if you're feeling down a lot, you should get your levels checked because vitamin D is a huge factor in immunity. And when we're low, when we're deficient in vitamin D, it creates other health problems. So that would be sort of part of the sun. But the more sun you can get, the better. And if you're working inside all the time and can barely get outside, try to put your try to put your desk near sunlight or or just at least just walk outside for a little bit just so you can get that vitamin D and that warmth and 
the sun really, really helps. And if you can't get any of that, there are light therapy lamps that are recommended that can really mimic the rays of the sun. And the therapy is said to affect the brain chemicals linked to mood and sleep. So that will all help you sleep better and possibly be less stressed and depressed. Now, moving on to nutrition. Again, that would go hand in hand with, you know, diet and exercise, but nutrition is just such a huge factor. Again, back to being, back to helping that immunity during the pandemic, the more healthy weight we are, the better in general. Now, for nutrition, of course, there's a million diets and so many people are starting, you know, kind of stopping cold turkey, all the holiday treats and snacks and going into some crazy diet. The whole thing here is sustainability. Some people can absolutely go from zero to 60 and then never look back and they're totally disciplined. And if that's one of one of you, that's fantastic. But it's hard for a lot of people because it, it should be sustainable. And some of these diets on paper are like, oh yeah, that's perfect. I can totally do that. But then you get to your day to day and it's not as easy. So give yourself bite-sized pieces in some of these things. Again, if you if your goal of weight loss is 100 pounds, you know, just to go on just some keto diet all out of sudden, all out of the blue, it can be very difficult to maintain that. So just add baby steps, give yourself, give yourself a chance because the small goals lead to bigger goals. And all of a sudden you've accomplished that goal. So whole foods nutrition, no matter what diet you stick to, try to stick to whole foods. That means avoiding processed foods, which are absolutely delicious. And of course the advertising is amazing. You can smell it. You go to the grocery store, you get it delivered. It's very easy. You open that bag and it's all of a sudden like a big giant hug and it just feels amazing. But when we eat these processed foods, it's just empty calories unless there's some good protein in there. But for the most part, a lot of these processed foods are packed with satiety or low satiety so we want more and more and more. They are made for that. We've seen these food documentaries and it's brilliant food science. And again, they're delicious but they are meant to create an addiction to those foods. So really try to stick to whole foods, meaning non-processed, things that would grow on a tree or come out of the ground or come from you know some kind of a plant or animal source, things like that. Um, and again, back to that, back to that 180 degree change, give yourself small steps with those nutrition goals because 90% of really our weight is based on nutrition and then the 10%, you know, really is your physical activity. So really boost that nutrition and pay attention and be mindful. So with that, being mindful would be to be thinking about what we eat, being mindful while we're eating. So with that would be proper meal prep and then sitting down to eat. Now meal prep actually keeps us mindful. When I say meal prep, that means, you know, you don't have to be extreme bodybuilder where you're weighing your chicken breast and, and your sweet potatoes. Just, you know, if you're going to be eating, put that out in portion control because the whole problem is, are the portions of the American sizes of everything that we have in comparison to Europe. But even Europe is sort of emulating some of the things that we do in America. Like England has a very high rate of obesity. So having meal prep means to portion your control, portion your food control. On a Sunday night, it's kind of fun to do with a family. Make it a family affair. Chop the vegetables. And then this is less wasteful of items too, because sometimes you buy produce and it just sits there in the refrigerator and then rots. And all of a sudden you, you spent a lot of money on an organic product and you know it just goes to waste. So this will keep you mindful of what you're eating, how much, the, how much work was put into it, and it makes you appreciate it. So it keeps you mindful. Also, when we eat, you know, studies have shown families that sit down together and have a meal together are very close and they have a lot of, they make a lot of connections. So whether you're with a family or your spouse, your partner, or even by yourself, sit down to eat because I know myself, I sit and eat at the counter while multitasking and then I don't, and then I don't really feel satisfied. And that's, that's kind of like not, then I really, I, I want to enjoy my food and be more mindful of what goes into my mouth. So that would be the meal prep, sitting down to eat, and following proper nutrition guidelines. Now, the worst part is a late night snacking or just mindless snacking during the day. So if you know that you're going to be winding down at night watching Netflix 
and maybe your favorite, you know, salty snack is Doritos, what have you. It's better to get the small bags of Doritos in the in the you know hundred the hundred snack snack bags, and of course you're like, okay, yeah, right, Anne, that does nothing for me. I want the big bag, and I want the bag with the red and the natural cheese coating. I understand, but. We put that hand in that bag and that bag is gone. I can't even have that in my house because it will be gone. So learning what your strategies are, practicing portion control, maybe you're a salty snack, maybe you're a sweets person. So sort of like allow yourself to have this because it's a treat and you deserve it. But if it's sweets, for example, maybe you want to do a cup of tea, maybe that can actually cut, cut, this, cut the sweet taste. There is a, an amazing line of Tazo teas that are like blonde brownie macaron there's a lot of tea companies that have emulated our need for sweets and so they've copied that in the teas that's not going to work for me I'm going to want a brownie so but that's just a suggestion um but just you know if you're going to have a brownie portion that out and in in, 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 or you can sort of say well I'm going to no longer eat after maybe my show is done at 9 p.m I'm going to stop eating at 9 p.m These are all things that are easier said than done, but the more mindful that we are of doing them, the better. And with that also is another tip is to drink more water. And it's, it's, it just seems people never understand why we need to drink a lot of water, but the more hydrated we are, the less hungry we are. Sometimes you could just be hypoglycemic bitchy, hangry, and it's just the fact that you're dehydrated. And drinking more water really helps that. And then you, and honestly, you burn more calories when there's water in you than not. And that just kind of helps, helps with the digestion, everything. Plus, if you're drinking more water and measuring out your water, you're going to the bathroom a lot more. And if you're working from home, it's a lot easier. I know how distracting it can be to work at an office and constantly have to go to the bathroom, which also can be wonderful distraction if you don't want to do the work but just think that adds to your extra steps you know you're going to be going to the bathroom more so it you know it's kind of a little bit of both but and sometimes drinking water can be very boring I understand that and you know there's ways to infuse you can infuse fruit in the water there's a lot of waters on the market that you can drink that have a little bit of flavoring but watch those sweets if it's added sugar really try to avoid that I sometimes use those meal those meal um you know, water enhancers because it adds a lot of vitamin B and I love the orange tangerine. It's amazing. But if you can drink pure water, that's also an unfiltered, that would be ideal. So drink more water. And finally, again, the last three would be to eliminate screen time. Stay off social media. Some, it can be, just remember, everybody's putting their best selves on social media. And I myself am a model. And people that use like Facetune and all these things, they go so overboard on tuning their face, their body, their hair and eye color, their facial structures. It, it just, it's not real. It's not real. And some of these people that are so happy and have these wonderful relationships, let's hope they do. I want everybody to be happy and feel wonderfully self-confident. But if you're struggling with self-confidence and you're seeing all the social media where, you know, it's these influencers that are stick thin and they're adding all of these of these filters it's not real i've met some of these people in real life they're not real so again i'm not ripping in anybody or or saying that you know i'm better because i don't use those filters but try to eliminate that because it can really wreak havoc on your confidence especially if you're trying to lose weight or do some health goals or you're not feeling successful and then you see everybody killing it on social media well i assure you everybody Everybody needs, you know, to keep their mental chuck in health. And sometimes when people are constantly posting, they may need more, you know, they may need more reassurance than others. So try to just take it with a grain of salt and stay off social media as much as you can if you feel it's affecting your mood. And especially if there's arguments going back and forth politically and you want to eliminate friends or you want to add friends and then you feel like you're getting in arguments, it's just not worth it. You know, so really just keep yourself mindful of that. And then also, if you need to be on the, on the screen all day, on the computer, whether you be coding or whatever you're doing in Zoom interviews, try to take some technology breaks. And if you can't, 
the blue blocking glasses can really help with, you know, the stress of the mind, the headaches, and helping you get the seven to nine hours of sleep that you may need, that we all need per night. And finally on that is therapy. Really pay attention and be mindful of your thoughts. If you are getting dangerously, just having dangerous thoughts and just feeling so isolated and feel like no one's there for you and perhaps you're trying to get to the doctor for something that has nothing to do with COVID, but maybe you're having to be in long lists of waiting and they don't get back to you because it's just a different, you know, the the hospitals are saturated. There are also other ways that you can seek a therapist if you don't want to go to a therapist. There are resources so available to us. And we see them advertised everywhere, such as Talkspace, Moon Mission, Moon Lift, Happify, Shine, etc. I'll put all those links below um, below a podcast to see if it can possibly help anybody. And honestly, if someone just needs to talk to someone, please reach out to me. I can be absolutely contacted in at, at Ann McDaniel's anywhere, and I have all my my media info on on the notes as well. So. I would love to, if you needed to share something and just needed someone to talk to, I, I'm happy to be there. Now, finally moving on and ending this podcast, I just wanted to shed some light on people that are working from home. Um, I myself am, and I'm also you know, dealing with this injury. But like I mentioned before, two-thirds of Americans have had their mornings disrupted or just days disrupted in general with the Zoom schools. Some, so one or more spouses have had to quit their job and stay home I talked to one woman who was an ER doctor and she had to resign from her job just so she could stay home with her kids and teach them proper Zoom school just because she knew that teachers were saturated and she wanted to do it herself. But so she's kind of feeling mentally not, she wants to be around the patients. Then she feels guilty that she's not there, but then she wants to provide a great education for her children. And it's really tough. And that's a lot of stress. So With these two-thirds of Americans that either had to quit their jobs or have had to resign or just have things disrupted, and you're facing your New Year's resolutions, there's just a few things that you can do during the day to keep yourself in check and just keep yourself on a structure. Number one is just making your bed in the morning. It just looks so much nicer, and that just declutters everything. It just declutters your space and makes you feel more put together. Number two would be expressing gratitude. And I know sometimes it's very hard to do when you do feel like the world is against you, but know that you're alive, you're breathing, you're breathing air, you're able, to, you're able to wake up from a bed. Just these little things can kind of make you feel a little bit more appreciative, even though I, I do understand. Believe me, I do. Um, journaling, maybe meditating, some prayer, writing in a journal. Again, just maybe kissing your kids and just expressing gratitude for your husband or whatever. And also, you know, move to get the blood flowing. Just, you know, walk around the house, stretch out while you're preparing your coffee. Maybe just do a couple jumping jacks. I know that Tony Robbins does 100 jumping jacks before he starts any kind of a speech because it just gets his blood flowing and gets his enthusiasm and, and energy up. And you're like, yeah, right, Anne. I'm going to do I'm going to do 10 jumping jacks the minute I wake up. OK, this is just a suggestion. Just to, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> um and again, stay off social media, limit screen time while you're, while you're preparing and things like that, unless you need to look at, at that for your, for your job right away. And then if you need to, if you are working from home and you have a separate space, shut the door. Shut the door to your office so that it closes you off from the house so that when you're in structured office time, your door is shut. I can't imagine going out to get a cup of coffee and seeing my kids there and then I want to participate and things like that, it would just be very distracting. So when you're in your office, shut the door and then give yourself a break and then structure family time or me time, whatever you need. And then when you're done for the day, shut that office door again and maybe do something for yourself that sort of separates the office day from the day day, even though you're in the same location. Maybe you want to take a hot shower or hot bath or go for a run or just change your clothes, or maybe just take some me time. Maybe you want to just pour yourself a glass of tea and relax before you face your family, or again, a a glass of red wine, as long as you're being, of course, portion control, because the wine thinking get out out of control for a lot of people, I understand. Um, So yeah, just allow yourself that me time before you 
get back to your family and get back to your life because you need to sort of separate that. Otherwise, it just, I can't imagine what a toll it would take. And again, I'm, by choice, I am single and by choice, I don't have children. And I empathize and I see the stress and I, I definitely, um, gosh, I, I, I feel very grateful that I don't have that extra stress in my life and I have total empathy for that. And go easy on yourself. Don't beat yourself up on your New Year's resolutions. Some people have written them down and they're not even going to attack them until like March. Give yourself a break. We may have those roaring 20s of 2021, but and we want to approach it with a great attitude and positivity, of course. But we are still in the pandemic. So just give yourself that break and be realistic with yourself because you'll get there, of course. And then schedule some kind of fun with family and friends. This can be such a trying time, but just even to get outside play football, go for a run, go for a walk, play a board game with a family, you know, back to, I love Monopoly, play Monopoly and argue, argue with your family, have fun with it and read a book or just, you know, or just clean the house and you can burn those calories while listening to a great podcast or an audio book. All these things can just ease your spirits and your, and your hopes and keep you structured for your day. And I wish all of you such a, Beautiful, wonderful success, prosperity, health, happiness in 2021. And I'm very grateful to have this this platform just to share fitness, nutrition, health, and wellness. And I just look forward to getting to know all of you more and more. I've learned so much from so many of you that have sent me questions or just found me on social media and said something about a certain podcast that helped them. That's That's the goal here is just to share this information And so that I can learn from you as well and just just spread it all around. So thank you again so much for being part of this part of this podcast and part of the listeners. And I would love to interview anybody that has anything, you know, on fitness, health and nutrition that that can be shared. And again, this is Ann McDaniels. And I just want to thank you so very much for listening to SoCal Sweat and a happy, healthy, wonderful 2021.